Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle with my friend Alfonso Rachel. You probably know by now what the show's about. We uh, try to talk a little bit about morality and philosophy that are underpinning a lot of the politics of the day. And uh, Zoe, I was, I, I just am very reluctant to uh, to pay YouTube any kind of money. I, I'm reluctant to pay them to suppress my videos, so Sorry. I have to deal with the, I have to deal with the commercials uh, that, that, <laughs> that YouTube puts on there, and and so on. So. Uh, I was watching a video last night, and I saw a video that was put out by a group of Asian Americans talking about the horrible injustice that has been done to Asian Americans in this country, all of the untold stories, all of the suppression, all of the hate, all of the violent crimes, all of their murders, and all the rest of it. And I thought, well, they've finally done it. They've managed to take uh, one group of Americans who've been traditionally extremely successful, and uh, and and the narrative now is to is to make sure that Asians don't get excluded from the giant uh, critical theory idea of everybody has to attack the idea of America. So uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, divisiveness. I'd like to talk about it as a as a force and as a political strategy. Uh, we're we're in a uh, ever increasing daily battle with critical race theory teachings here in America. Uh, we. we when you look at some of the curricula that that corporations are not only allowing but paying big money for, mm. it, it, it's astonishing how 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 hateful it is. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm. It's not even it's not a question of hateful towards white people because when you look at the teaching things in critical theory, critical race theory. It doesn't really matter. You can take out the word white and replace it with anything else. You can take out any of these adjectives and replace them with other adjectives, and it doesn't matter. It's hateful. It's nasty. It's mean-spirited. It makes everybody distrust everybody else based on the most superficial of uh, differences, which is your skin color. Mm. And, and I don't think... I really do believe that the American people are not going to put up with this a whole lot longer. We're already starting to see some some pushback, but but in just in general terms, mm. what what does it say about a group of people who feel that the only way that they can gain power is to turn everybody against their neighbor, raise every man's hand against his neighbor? Oh, sure, man. It's um uh, this competition. Of, of victimhood, you know, I'm more of a victim than you, and, and, and we don't want to be left out. We don't want to be left out of the victim games. Uh, and, and this this goes way back, man. This is this has always been uh, this divisive approach. You know, even uh, how how bad is it? You know, even the word of God talks about, like, say, for instance, in Leviticus, there is a you know they they call it za'arat, and basically it's 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 leprosy, right? God hates a divisive tongue so much that that was actually one of the curses that would fall on people. It's like, look, are you out there? Are you slandering people? Are you getting out there and are you using your speech to divide people for 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 what? For your personal gain or just because you ain't got any be anything better to do? Leprosy. I'm gonna give you leprosy. That's, God was very intolerant. Unclean. Yeah. Unclean. It's like you got an unclean mouth, man. You got cavity creeps. You got you got. Uh, uh, you're just you're using your tongue the wrong way. The word of God says life and death is in the power of the tongue, because you can use your tongue to to literally destroy people, uh, as well as of course to use it more wisely and uh, you know be constructive with it. Um, when you have you know as as far as uh, the Asian uh, community and Asian, that's that's a weird word because Asian can mean a lot of things. You know, it's like Indian mm -hmm. people are Asian too. So I think even that's a misappropriate, but that's what they do, Bill. That's that's one of the reasons why this whole so-called race narrative, it's, it's we're really talking about nations, but you know, we, by using the term race itself, we're putting each other in competition with each other. It's, it's a word that's used to divide us. The very word itself is used to divide us. So you're going to have these people that want to clamor on to their race at the table and stuff. And, um, you know, I, I would hope that just like we've talked about before, that Asians will stop and look at who the car dealers are yeah, on there this. You go. It's once again, it's the Democrats. If if if, ra if if Asians have felt injustices like they're feeling right now, the, the, the attacks that they're getting, well, these are Democrat controlled areas from the flipping Cooley Act to, to um, um, World War Two, the dropping of the bomb. That's Democrats. You know, it's like if, I remember what was it? Tom Hanks was was saying that America was was racially motivated to drop a bomb on 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 a, a Japan. It's like, oh well, you might want to take that up with the Democrats because it was a Democrat who did that. So um, you know, and hey, unfortunately, 
it was maybe because Japanese were being pretty darn racist themselves. I mean, they killed like what, over 30 million people uh, between uh, uh, Korea and, and Southeast Asia and the Chinese. Like, hey, they had a big racial problem too. Um, so, you know, you have these people who are actually trying to come at us and accuse America of racism. It's like, you want to talk about some nationalistic uh, overlords, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, broad brush a culture or anything like that. I got love for, 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 uh, you know, my Chinese, my Japanese, you know, my Koreanese, all of them. <laughs> I got love for all of them, but I know that certain ideas will set in. I know that certain kind of propaganda, propaganda and cultural stoking will set in. It's national pride. And that's the kind of stuff I don't dig from any nation. I don't like it from anybody. And, uh, but one of the biggest drivers Actually, the biggest driver, sorry, the biggest driver of that kind of propaganda in America, dividing people, that's your Democrats. Before we go on, let me just respond, not to you, but to Tom Hanks, just, just for a second, because this, mm -hmm. this is a pet peeve of mine. Mm -hmm. To say that, that the atomic bombs were used because they were yellow people and it was an expression <laughs> of our raci mm -hmm. racism, you might want to talk to the, to the citizens of Dresden about that. Mm -hmm. Because the firebombing of Dresden during World War II killed, killed more people in a single night than the atomic bombing of Japan wow. did. And there aren't anybody in the world who's more white than Germany. As a matter of fact, during World War II, that's what the whole thing was about. Mm -hmm. So if you want to say that uh, Americans dropped the atomic bomb on Japan because of racism, you're going to have a lot of explaining to do to the whitest of white people in Germany who had all of their cities flattened by Allied bombing before mm. the situation happened in, in Japan. So I just want to get that out of the way. Um, th this this is, is just evil. And, and I, so I got to tell you, I, I am comforted in the midst of so much of this political despair. I'm just daily comforted by realizing that the interactions between pe me and people who are supposed to hate me and people who I'm supposed to hate in my own country mm. are, 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 not only, are not only not violent or not nasty, they're, they're, they're cordial and they're courteous. Mm. I go to a 7-Eleven, I'm in an elevator, somebody holds a door for me, I hold a door for somebody mm. else. And, and you realize that all of these divisions are completely artificial, that when you get out there, you know, you got Packers fans and you got Bears fans, and that's and that and that's the distinction. And and it's it's so it's just so plain evil mm. to 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 use this. And I got to tell you, I I really feel like this is that this is a a a, a blade that they've used so many times that it is. To lost, it, lost its edge is to understate the case. Now I begin to think that more and more Americans every day realize that this term racist or, or, or you know, here, look, these people, Zoe, mm -hmm. are, so, are so obsessed with victimhood mm -hmm. that they themselves have a term that, that they apply that they think is, a, is a, 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 like a, a compliment. But it, it, it indicates just how internally racist they are. And that term is, is BIPOC, B-I-P-O-C. Uh, P-O-C is people of color, which means everybody except for white people. Mm. Every, the entire human family except for white people is, are people of color. Mm. But B-I-P-O-C is black and indigenous people of color, mm. meaning that blacks and Native Americans have a privileged place even in their own definition that's supposed to include everybody except for the racists. Yeah, it's oh man, and I wonder how how that alphabet's gonna grow too, man. Us and more of these more of these dang acronyms. Bipoc, OQ, pop people. Yeah, but okay, and and I I've talked about this a lot, you know, myself. You know, this uh, you know, you have people of color, color, and you have white people, uh, or or uh, people of uh. Eth uh, of a certain ethnicity. I was I was talking about this before in my in a, one of my studies. Everybody else is ethnic except for white people. That's there's something like that's totally wrong with that. And 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 the problem is as even the term ethnic is is a full on misappropriation of words. Ethnic itself doesn't have anything to do with your your national heritage per se. Ethnic is the Greek word for pagan. Ethnic is the Greek word for basically godless or this is your god but you don't have the one true God. And in America, the spiritual problem with that is that everybody is being made to affirm or suckered into affirming their state of godlessness. What's your ethnicity? When you look on a paper, it's like, what's your ethnicity? And you're, and you're, and you're basically led to affirm your state of godlessness. And 
white people are given this exclusion. They don't have to be ethnic. I guess, you know, and, and why? Or why is it that, um, you know, white people can't be racist? Like white people, they don't get to enjoy, no longer do white people get to enjoy the privilege of this or that. And white people can't have racism expressed against them. Well, why? Why is it that white people or any other, I'm sorry, any other race can't be racist and only white people can be racist? How come other races can go ahead and, and make these platforms and these acronyms and all this other stuff, but white people can't? How come it's okay to have brown pride, black pride, but it's not okay to have white pride? And it all comes back to what I've said a long time ago, because you have people of color, are who are the biggest investors of white supremacy that there is. That's when you, exactly right. When you say that white people or or only um, that other only white people can be racist, well, why is that? Because white people have the power. Okay, so what you just said, what you have just declared, is that white people are superior. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. That's exactly what it says every time. That's what you've done. It's like you have basically made them superior. They didn't do it themselves. You gave them that. And you continue to give them that. And then the white people who go along with this, mainly your liberal Democrats, are the ones who are saying, well, I guess we're just going to have to be good people because we're morally superior to everybody else. And we're going to have to relinquish our supremacy because it's not like you can take it from us. How yeah. very condescending and elitist is that? And these people just feed it, man. They just feed it. Yeah, we just have to. Yeah, that's the that's the progressive attitude mm -hmm. among among white uh, progressives is um, we basically have to take a knee to black people or mm. people of color mm. because in the past people have said mean things to them and done some mean things to them too. As if mean things were never done to white people. I did the math mm. on this once. You know, mm. this is going to be an extremely controversial thing to say, but mm. the, the, if, you, if you look at the math, the actual numbers, mm. if you look at the number of black people who were lynched during the history of lynching in this country, mm. it, it's, it's roughly equal to the number of white victims of, of, mm. of black crime murder in, in a year or two. Uh, and I only say that not to justify lynching, but I say it because, because the entire trick, mm. the magic trick, the illusion is predicated on you taking a look. This is how magic works, right? This is how card tricks work. Any kind of, of, of hand magic works this way. You do something with one hand, which you are automatically uh, wired to look at. And then you do the actual, you know, palming of the thing with the hand that's not moving. Mm. And so they have to continuously put this, this, this kind of, you know, sparkly thing in motion, and keep it spinning. So they don't see what's really going on underneath, which is this thing's an enormous power play. It's an enormous uh, wealth transfer. And, and it's just like, even if you take, I mean, when I talk about divisiveness, I'm not just talking about racial divisiveness, let's talk about economic divisiveness. Mm -hmm. When Bernie Sanders basically says that people are evil if they make $414,001, but they're nor, but they're not only not evil, but they, they're entitled to money if they make $413,999, this, this desire to divide people mm -hmm. is what they do. Yes. And it's it's effective. Mm -hmm. Divide and conquer is probably the single oldest military maxim in the world. And and that's how you win battles, especially how you win battles against a superior force. Mm -hmm. You you take all of your force, try to pinch off a little bit of their greater force, knock that out of the game. Mm -hmm. And if you can if you got the the tactical smarts to keep doing that, strategically you win. Divide and conquer, indeed, man. It's uh, uh, that's that's the that's the game to be played. And you know, now one would say uh, the reason why white people have all the power and they and they should be that if there's this uh, punitive measure that has to be taken, when it's going to be resolved, I don't know. It never will be because victimhood is just delicious and people like to suck on it for the rest it of the It is. Effort. There you go. Right? Yeah, yeah that, that's it too, man. It's delicious, yeah. right? It's, 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 yeah, yeah. you know, I've been wronged and mm. I'm, and I'm, and I've been harmed and, and that makes me special and makes me, <laughs> uh, you know, makes me more uh, likely, it, may, it, it morally justifies me cutting in line at Starbucks kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, right. And now uh, you'll have um, the, the, the non-whites, if we, if we will, will say that the reason why white people have so much power is because they cheat. It's like, okay, so basically what you're telling me is that they've gained the superior, this, this supremacy by cheating. 
Um, well, then what you're also saying is because weak people cheat. That's that's what it comes down to. What so, so the the bigger slap in the face is is that you're saying that these people are supreme, superior because they have all the power, but they are superior to you because they're weaker. That makes no sense. And if they've cheated, then for God's sakes, how did you let that happen? It's like okay, if they cheated and they won, um, that's that's an even bigger slap in the face. That's because it's like, well, how come you have it? If you're if you're really as good, if you have the physical and you have the mental prowess to be able to take on somebody, then how is it that you haven't been able to stop the cheaters yet? How how is it that you've not been able to 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 stop the supposedly weaker people? So these kind of things, it's it's just this constant investment in this. Um, in this evil, that's it, like, just like you said, man, you break it all the way down. It is, it's evil. You know, that's, that's really true. And, and this modern uh, critical race theory thing that we're experiencing in America now, the people that are trying to uh, foist this on the American people are running into the same problems that the, that the Nazis had when they did the exact same thing in, in the 30s and into the 40s. Mm. They, tried to, they tried to make the Jews into subhuman rats and vermin mm. who at the same time controlled the entire world and caused the war. Mm -hmm. And how do you square these <laughs> two things, right? We're the master race, except for these vermin who control everything. Yeah. You, 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 you run into this, into this inescapable trap and you run into this trap whenever you try to make these kind of divisions and get away from individual people with individual philosophies and, and, and gain and so on. It's, it's not something that can continue, but I look back at things like the, the Dean Martin roasts or, or All in the Family, for example, mm -hmm. and I look at, at how directly, this is the, like 72, I think, 74 for All in the Family, mm -hmm. how directly people were able to talk about these issues without rancor. That's not to say there was without harm, but without rancor. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all of this is is being destroyed. They're, they're, they're putting a, a, a knife into the oldest and deepest wound in the country and twisting it. Yeah. And, and they're evil people. And I think maybe to wrap this up, we maybe we should think about trying to get people to think about the second side of that equation. Divide, yes, we can see the divide. What about the conquer? In other words, if people are a political party or a group of people or whatever, an ideology is determined to divide, then why would they be doing that? Well, in, in America, you know, when we talk about divide or being even uh, unified, this solidarity, uh, I always ask, well, unified according to what? Solidarity according to what? Because in America, we've got basically two distinct ideas of what America is. And America... It's, it's a republic, it's a constitutional republic, and then you have those who have this fantasy that no, America's just straight up a democracy. We have democratic processes, yes, but at, at the end of the day, we're a republic, we're a constitutional republic. And Democrats don't like it, that there are these God-given rights that the government is supposed to, you know, to, to, to guard. And that they cannot convince people to vote away. Right, it, it's, it's, that's not supposed to happen. You're, the, a court is supposed to say, you wanna do what? Man, we're not, throw this out, man. We're not gonna waste the court's time with this. You don't, you don't infringe. I don't care. You can say states' rights all you want to. It has to square with the supreme law of the land. You can't be infringing on somebody else's life. You can't be infringing on their liberty. You can't infringe on their property and stuff like that. But people, but Democrats wanna be able to have the power to do that. And they will get out there and they will start making their divisive talk divide people of their integrity of what it is to hold up, you know, this republic. And, and if we're asking why, it comes down to that pride and it comes down to that entitlement. Whatever it is that they feel like they're entitled to, they feel like they should have the right to have it and just totally upset the balance of freedom in their favor, being unfair to people in the in the so-called guise of fairness. That's just who they are. Um, you know, when people have these this this just vice for whatever it is, and they want to make it legal, and they want to protect it, and they just want to be able to do it. That's just that's just who Democrats are. And if I could say this really quick, it goes back to like when you were talking about Germany and the power that the Jews had, and and the and the basically the 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 jealousy. That, uh, you know, uh, that's the word you know, envy. It's just plain envy. Right. And it's prideful. It's very prideful. This goes back to the same time when, when the Jews were in, were slaves, uh, in Egypt. It was the same thing. It said, even as slaves, second class citizens, it talked about how 
powerful they became, very powerful. And Pharaoh wasn't even afraid of them taking over. That wasn't his fear. His fear was them leaving. That's what he was worried about. It's like the strangest thing. And we see that with the Democrat Party today. We see them, how they, how they try to keep their propaganda, to keep their lock on the Jews and the black community. They're not afraid of them taking over. They're afraid of them leaving. Right. And as I heard one pastor say, it's like, yeah, when Moses was talking about, hey, let my people go, he says he added, you know, and it's not a good thing to add, but it does make sense in terms of the culture. It's like you got to know when to let Pharaoh go. So for 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 your for your for the black <laughs> community. Right. And anybody of color and anybody who's being duped and suckered by the Democrats who are dividing us. You got to let Pharaoh go. <laughs> All right. He's not doing you any favors. No, it's brilliantly mm -hmm. put, man. Brilliantly put. The last college event I did was probably two, three years ago. No, it's longer than that. It's four or five years ago at least because it just got too toxic and 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 people were shouting. Not all of them. Most people were listening, but some of them were shouting. I said, I just don't need this anymore. But during that uh, uh, spirited uh, back and forth, um, this radical young uh, black woman was talking about uh, cultural appropriation, you know, uh, white people wearing dreadlocks or whatever the case may be. And I just said, it's kind of funny that you would be making that accusation in English in an air-conditioned building powered by electricity, all of which you have appropriated from the white people who invented it. How about, instead of all of this constant divvying things up, how about if we just say that electricity and air conditioning and all the rest, dreadlocks, all of it, are part of the human family and part of the things that we have developed and, and, and cherish as a species, that all art belongs to everybody, that Shakespeare doesn't belong to white people, Shakespeare belongs to everybody, and so does everything else. That, that ability to, to, like that one-two punch, the ability to, number one, you hit them with, with the contradictions and the evilness of what they're saying, and then the, then the, the counter punch is, why don't we just, why don't we just take the higher path and, and, and the true path, by the way? That these are not distinctions that I own because I am a, a, a gradient lighter or darker than anybody else. These things belong to all of us. Indeed. And now, a really quick question. I think with, with the air conditioning, though, I think that was a black guy who had been in air conditioning. Or was it the air conditioning truck? I, gotta, well, I, I don't know. In that case, in that case, I got some. Uh, I have so much learning to do. There's so many things that I need to learn. Um, yeah, maybe you're right about that. I, th uh, you know, I, I would suggest anybody Google it myself because I, I, that sounds familiar. I could be wrong, but I think I, I think that's how they go. Well, then, then uh, even then, the point's even stronger, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we we don't own the past based on micro gradations of what Thank color you. our skin is today. Thank you. Uh, and and that's just mm. evil. And that's why it has to be fought. And that's why we're here. And that's why you're here. Mm. Uh, the members of BillWhittle.com uh, made, a, made a big uh, commitment back in uh, January, December, January last year, allowed us to bring our friend uh, Alfonso Rachel um, back into the mix, which makes me happy and him happy and you happy and everybody happy. And uh, we were talking just before we recorded these shows about um, what we're working on next in terms of getting into the uh, public imagination rather than just, you know, shrieking at them from the, from the <laughs> lofty mountaintops. And we're looking forward to showing you that, too, in the not-too-distant future. Uh, so for my friend Alfonso Rachel, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you next time on The Virtue Signal.